Hey there, my name is Matthew Peterson. I'm a trainer at Pragmatic Works located in Northeast Florida. And for today's video, what I want to talk about is the if function. Uh, the if function is a very common DAX expression used uh, just about in almost all Power BI reports that I see. However, if you're new to Power BI, you might not have been exposed to it. So I want to give you a quick rundown of how it works. Now, the way that we're going to do this today is we're going to be looking at some play data that I have. It's not too businessy, it's more, uh, more fun data. But what we're going to do is we're going to put a test in. That's what the if statement does. It get, you put in a test and it's going to check to see if it's true or if it's false. And then based on that, we will have an outcome. Now, our outcomes today is we're going to try to add in new columns of data. Uh, these columns didn't exist in the original data source, but it's something that we want in order to make some kind of visual, or some kind of determination about uh, what the data is speaking to us. So let's head over and take a look at what the data is for today, and then we'll see how this if statement actually works. So as you take a look here, I've got some, my first one is just student data based on as an educator, that's what I used to do. And I have some student names, I have how many late homeworks they have, as well as what their current test average is. So just three columns. And I want to put in a brand new column in just a second. But just to show you what the other data is going to look like, I have uh, some children names, how many missed chores they have, and what their currently weekly screen time allotment is. Now where you write DAX is actually done in the desktop outside of the Power Query Editor. So we're going to get rid of the Power Query Editor at this point, and we're going to come over into the desktop. And I like to write all of my DAX statements when I'm adding columns in the data view, because that way I get to see the results immediately to make sure everything worked right. So let's do the first one. Let's talk about students and their late homework. So let's say that there is a reward of uh, based on how many late homeworks they have, they either get a pizza party or they don't get a pizza party. So two different scenarios and we want to put down for each row whether or not that student got a pizza party or not. So in order to add a new column here, I'm just going to right click on student data, come over and hit on new column. This pulls up my formula bar. Now if you're new to DAX, just a, a quick trick here, if you hold down your control key and scroll up or down on your mouse, it makes your text bigger. Also, anytime you want to move to a new line of code, if you hit shift enter, and you can have as many white spaces as you want in your DAX formula in terms of, of lines here. So that's just a way to kind of start making things look a little bit easier. And I'll be doing that throughout this demonstration. So let's make a column name. Let's call this our reward. So we always have to have a name for our formula. So we're going to say the reward is equal to. Now let's put in our if statement. So we're going to say if. And notice what it's telling you. Uh, in Power BI, every DAX formula tells you what the function does, and then it gives you the roadmap of what you need in order to make it work. So we're going to say if. Well, we want to check. What is it that we're trying to check? I want to check their late homeworks column. So I'm just going to start typing in late homeworks. There it is. I'll tab that to make it go up to the formula bar very quickly. And I'm going to say if their late homeworks are less than three, so meaning they either had two, one, or none, less than three, so that's the test I want it to do, comma. Now it says, well, what do you want the result to be if it's a true thing? I'm just going to put a text string in here. I'm going to say pizza party. And then we'll put that around double quotes because that's a text string. Then we don't have to put a result uh, if it's false. So let's see what happens if we don't put anything there. In DAX, anytime you see anything with brackets around it in the, in the roadmap, so to speak, that means it's optional. So let's see what happens if we don't put anything there. So we'll hit enter. And what happens is for all of the false statements where they were three or above, we produce blank values because we didn't give it anything to actually put in. So it just said, I'm not, I don't know what to do, so I'm just going to leave it blank. But I don't want it to leave it blank. Let's put down what actually happens. So I'm going to go comma and says, okay, well, what do you want it to be if it is false? Uh, I'm going to do shift enter here so we can see it a little bit easier. I'm going to say uh, no party. And we'll put a we'll put a, um, a have a sad face there, and we'll close that out. And notice now we see that those blanks have been filled in with no party. All right, easy peasy, right? Well, something else you can do with DAX it doesn't have to just be hard coded values. You can actually put in mathematical formulas if you want to. So let's say I want to base it off their late homework, something happening to their test average. So let's add another if just to get a, a feel for it here. So I'm going to say the test reward is equal to, we're going to start off with an if. I want to check their late homework scores. So we're going to go check their late homework. I'm going to tab that over. 
and I'm going to say if it is less than two, so that means either one or none, then I want to go to the true statement. What do I want to happen? I want you to take their test column. So we're going to go test student data table. That's what this means down here. Um, <clears throat> is whenever you have your, come on over. Whenever you see the, the parentheses, sorry, not the parentheses, the, the single quotes around uh, the words, that means that's the table. And whenever you see brackets, that's referencing a column within that table. So the student data table, which is what we're on, and the test column. And I want you to take that, and I want you to add, let's say, five points to the score. And then we'll go comma. Well, what do we want to happen if not? Well, no penalization, but we'd want the test scores to say the exact same. So I'm just going to say return the student data test column. And then we will hit enter. And notice what we see. We now see that if it was one or none, which we have here, one, it took the 85 and added five to it. Uh, we have down here, uh, Prithi, he had, uh, 77 went to 82. But everything in the middle here, none of them actually changed because they were either two or greater. So it just reproduced the exact test column. So that is the basics of if right there. However, we can make them a little bit more advanced because sometimes you have more than two outcomes based on a condition. You might have three or four. So how can you do that? Well, one way you might, some of you might know is called the switch function, which I'll talk about in another video. However, today what I want to talk about, because we're doing if, is we're going to go with nested ifs. And what a nested if does is it does the first check, you put down what you want to happen if it's true, but then if it's false, you want to do another check on top of that because you have more than just two outcomes. So let's see how we can do that. And I'm going to do it in the, uh, on my children's screen time here. So let's say I want their screen time to go down based on the chores that they have missed throughout the week. So let's add in a new column. And I'm going to say actual screen time is equal to, and it's all based off of how many chores they missed. So that's the first thing we need to check. Let's go check the score. So we're going to say if, go look at those missed chores. And we're going to say if the missed chores are equal to zero, meaning they didn't miss anything. Um, actually, no, we can go less than one. If they're less than one, which means they didn't miss anything, what happens? Well, they should get all of their screen time. So let's bring back the entire weekly screen time allotment. So I'm going to pull in the screen time minutes allotment. And so that's what I want to happen if it's true. Well, what do I want to happen if it is false? Well, it's there's a few things that could happen. We, we get maybe rid of some of them, a little bit more of them, a lot of them. So instead of just one or two things, I have three or four different options that can happen. So now I need to say, okay, I want you to check it again. So if it's not less than one, I need you to do another check for me. So I'm going to go down and hit shift enter so we can start seeing it. So this is what's going to happen if we get a false for the very first check. If it's false, I want you to do another check of this. Go back and check their missed chores again. And now I want you to check to see if it's less than two. Because they weren't less than one. <coughs> Sorry, it wasn't less than one. So now all the results that you still have left over, now see if any of them are less than two. And if they're less than two, then what I want you to do is I want you to take the screen time allotment. So we're going to go with their screen time allotments. And I want you to multiply it by, let's say they get 90% of their screen time allotments. Perfect. So now if they found it, but, well, what if I want to, to do another check again? Well, I'm going to put in a comma for what happens if it's false. Well, now I want to check to see if it's less than maybe three. So I'm going to hit shift enter. I'm going to do another if check. I'm going to say, hey, go take a look at those missed chores. See if they are less than three. And if they're less than three, then I want you to take their screen time allotment and let's give them 80%. All right, and then it says false. Well, now if I'm done checking, maybe if, if, if there's only one last thing that there could be, like they get 50% of their uh, weekly screen time allotment, this is where I would now say, okay, you don't need to do any more checks. Whoever is left, whatever is left, here's what I want you to do. I want you to take that weekly screen time allotment and we're going to multiply it by 0.5 and then parentheses. So that closes off this one. This is what I love. They always highlight your parentheses in DAX to let you know the opening and the closing. Close that one off, 
close this one off so we should be good now I've got the one at the top one at the bottom let's hit enter and let's see what happens so far so when we went to Sloan here it checked is it less than one yes yeah, Sloan was less than one so she got her full allotment of 350 let's go to Caleb who is less than who had five so it starts off is Caleb less than one no it's not so then it goes to the next check is it less than two no, it's not. So it then has to go to the false again. So it checks again, less than three. No, it's not. So finally it says, well, you're the last one. You're the leftover. So we're going to multiply you by 0.5. If we take a look at Brooklyn here, on Brooklyn, she is at two. So when it checks for less than one, doesn't cut it. So then it goes to the false condition. It says, hey, if, all right, is she less than two? Nope, because she is two didn't cut it so it didn't multiply by 0.9 so it went to the false statement which was another if check less than three yes less than three finally she she falls into something and we multiply it by 0.8 so that is a nested if sometimes it can get a little bit um, gnarly to look at when you start having a whole bunch of them together and that's where you might want to go over to the switch function and again I hope to cover the switch function in a future video Hopefully this helped you out if you are new to the if statement. Uh, please like, subscribe, uh, comment below. Let me know what you enjoyed about it. Any future videos that you would like for me to discuss or cover. Uh, and I hope this was helpful.